Okay, so if you notice, I don't know if you can see this console log very well, our author, it has an object, but it doesn't tell us our author, it's just a reference to it, um, because they were just linked. So let's change our query. So we're gonna return posts, and you know, cool thing about Grok, our posts, we can define that we just wanna say, oh, we just want the title and the description of the posts. And if we save that and refresh, you can see now for each post, we just get a title that we don't actually have a description. Um, but if we did, we would have one. Um, so I'm not too concerned about grabbing everything. You can feel free to just grab the fields that we're using. I'm just gonna take everything and then I'm going to essentially follow the reference to the categories. So I'm gonna say here, I want the categories, categories. And I'm going to follow the reference by doing categories, which is an array. So we follow it like this. And then we follow the reference and we're going to grab the title. You could grab the title and the description like that. Um, however, we're just grabbing the title. So we also want to do the same with the author. So I'm going to take the author name and I'm going to say for the author, I'm going to follow it and grab the name and then for the author slope uh, I'm going to take the author and follow it and get a slope like so so now if we go back and we look at our post array nothing's happening okay that's not what I was expecting <laughs> So let's refresh, do the data call again. Check our array. We now have everything, but we also have an author name, which actually says a name. We have an author slug, and we've got the categories array with just the name. So that's what we want. So yeah, you can see there's a lot of sort of redundant data here. So actually let's just say all we need from the post is the title, the main image, we want the published, published at, um, anything else? Let's leave it at that for now. Is that everything? So we've got this stuff. Title, published art, title, author, published art, category. Yes, that should be it. Okay, cool. So now we've got, as you can see, it returns the posts. So I just wanna, I'll get rid of this console log. And of course, we're gonna create a post component. So we can reuse this if we need to display our posts elsewhere. So we're going to export a default function posts. Um, it's going to take the props of posts. Let's actually console log posts. And we're going to return a div in here, which is essentially going to say um, if there is post, I'm going to do post have a map and for each post. Oh, I can't type. For each post. I'm going to put out the, I'm going to return like h2 with the post.title. I hate it when it does that. And then back in our index page, let's, um, let's display our posts. So we don't want it in our hero div. We do want it inside this main div here. So let's just add posts here like this. Post, post equals post, so we're passing the props of posts, lots of posts, and we've got the titles. So that's great. So I think this posts itself, it needs to be inside of a div. And we also want to have a title that says latest posts, I believe it says on Twitter. So let's add that like that. Last name of this is going to be, we want some padding for px-6, 
like so. So we've got the pad in here. Let's give this some styles. So it's got quite a lot of gap. Um, so we do like this, margin Y of 10. Uh, the text, let's do gray 900. New font. Let's try balls here, that looks like. Yeah, whatever. Text is going to be big. Text 2XR. Let's post. Okay, great. So we've got this. And now we can go work on our actual posts. So for each post, if we just look at the Twitter one, we have now. So we're turning a div, which is great. Um, for each post, post on map. So yeah, I want to return a div here. Let's actually wrap this. Let's actually wrap this like that. Let's bring it down. So on a div, on a h2, like that. Sorry, I'm just going to break it all up and I will make it look nicer. There we go. So we've got our h2 with a post title. So you can see it's at the top there saying category. So let's add a span. And then we're gonna add the post up category, like so. Ah, it's not post up category, it's post up categories. Uh, and I just want the first one. Okay, so we've got tech, perfect. So we've got the category, we've got the title, and then we've got another, let's just add another span. So it's gonna say by, and then we want the author name on is it on yeah and we'll just say on and then in here let's just say new date and then we want to take the post dot publish at and we'll say what's it called two day string yeah, two day string and we broke it author name is not defined Cost. We get close to author name. So by Adam Richardson, blah blah blah. Okay, so we want to surround that in a span like so. Oh dear. Span. And then we can add the class name of this text blue 500. So we've got that, and I think this class name of the text is gray. Fine, our post title, post name. Um, let's say text dash 2XL, text dash gray. Let's go with 700 and then we'll do font bold. Um, let's see what that looks like. Not very good. I think, yeah, like the, the font, the letters are quite close to each other. I'm just gonna. Um, Add this tracking height um, to make that happen, but it's probably a bit of font. So that is looking good. Um, so that's looking good. The category, not so much. So let's add the category class name. So text dash gray. I think, did we say 500 for the other one? So let's do 500 for this one. Let's just do text sm. That's way too small. But if we do text dash bold, uh, font dash bold, that makes it a bit bigger. Yeah, so that's cool. And I think with it being bold, we can drop it down one. Just there we go. And then, pad and bottom. Let's try four for that. Why is it not working? Oh, just yeah, so pad and bottom of four on the, on the thing. And bottom of four in here, and then on the overall div, I want to say border dash b dash two maybe the border dash for a two hundred. And bottom of let's say eight. Yeah, 
do the pattern bottom of four. And we actually need a pattern top of four as well. Um, yeah, I don't think this looks bad. I mean, it doesn't look exactly like this, but um, it's looking fine. So their text is clearly a bit more grey. So we do grey 600. Um, and I think it has more space in at the top and bottom. So if we do 6 and 6. Yeah, I mean, whatever. That's fine for now. Um, cool. So let's just maximise this. And you'll see that the latest post actually goes to the side. I really like the way that that looks. So back on our index, we have got this div, which has got latest posts, and then this post um, div. So if we say above, ah, let's do medium, let's call it flex. It should do what we want it to do, yeah. Um, and then on this outermost div, if I say here, first name equals flag, I make sure that's a flex call. And above medium, we're going to add the pattern to the left. So it's got a gap. Okay. And then let's add the width. So this div the H2 latest posts. Yeah, so we're going to add this div here, latest posts. And as I said, the width of this is going to be, yeah, let's try 96 because we have it. Yep. And then I can do medium width. 96 medium text center. Yeah, and I think that's good, honestly. There was a lot of padding at the top. Uh, so if I do medium PG20 like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, it looks fine. Let's pump up those text sizes on the larger screens. So title, so medium text dash for Excel. Yeah, that's cool. And then I think everything else is about the same. I think their text is a bit smaller actually for this. Um, text is okay, cool. So hopefully you're beginning to see how to use Tailwind for styling. And I think also on our hero we could bump up, uh, it's in the social icons. So if, if they're displayed, above medium, let's do text dash for XL. Um, there's got even smaller, but yeah, that's cool. All right, so the next thing we need to do is make these actually links. So let's, for each title, let's wrap this in. So let's import a link from the next link. And I want to wrap this title here, just in a link tag, like so. I want to add an anchor tag. I don't want a href on the anchor tag, but I want an a tag inside of it, um, just so it gives us the, the cursor. And we're getting the screen that because we need to add a link. So I'm just going to add the link of post. And then I'm going to say the link is going to be post.slug.current. So that should work now. Post.slug is undefined. Is it now? So then we press console. Post. Ah, so it looks like we didn't include the slug. Title main image published at slug. We refresh. There we go. Okay. 
And then one thing that I forgot to do is inside our posts, where we've got this post.map, let's just give this div a key equals um, post.slug.current as well. So React won't scream at us about not having a, a unique key. So yeah, we're looking, um, we're looking okay. Uh, of course we could refine this hugely, but I think it's good enough for now. So yeah, these links, let me show you what happens when we click a link. It takes us to a post, forward slash post, which is what we said, and then forward slash the slug of the post, which is exactly what we want. Um, so let's add the functionality for that to happen. So in our pages folder, let's add a new folder called post, not the salt. In fact, if I just delete that, we can do a new file and just do post forward slash, which will add the folder as well. And I'm going to call this file slug.js in square brackets like this. And then let's just do export default function single post. And we're going to return this is a single post. Single posts. So this should start working now. So great, so we've gone to this slug and essentially if we go to any URL, forward slash post, forward slash absolutely anything right now, it will display this page right now, um, which is not what we want. So in the next video, we are going to take a look at implementing the functionality for the single post.